We're at Barnsdale Gardens today, started by Gardeners World presenter Jeff Hamilton, and it's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden, Mr. Fothergills, and Dalak. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, we're out and about today and we've come down to Rutland to visit Barnsdale Gardens. These fantastic gardens that were created by Jeff Hamilton who presented Gardener's World for many years, a fantastic gardener. And these have developed wonderfully over the years. They're now maintained by his son Nick, but we're gonna have a good look round to see the gardens and see what changes have happened. But there are now eight acres with 38 show gardens, all looking wonderful. And if you used to watch Gardener's World years ago, you will probably recognize this because this is one of the first parts of the garden that Jeff developed. It's known as the Versailles Garden and it's got this long walkway of grass with the borders at the side full of color all through the year. Trees, shrubs, herbaceous perennials and bulbs. It's absolutely fantastic and there's so much color and interest here at the moment. So we're going to have a wander around and then we'll catch up with Nick in a few minutes. So many different areas here at Barnsdale and this is one of my favourites and apparently it was one of Jeff's favourites. It's the woodland garden and he planted this back in 1983 with a mixture of ornamental shrubs and trees that have developed really well now. I mean look at this fantastic birch tree here with this wonderful white trunk and we've got aces here, we've got magnolias and then we've got lovely ground cover underneath that's got spring perennials and lots of bulbs in there. So it's a haven for wildlife, it's just so wonderful and peaceful and I just love the dapple shade. This is what I want to create in my new garden, a woodland just like this. If I could pick it up and take it away, I certainly would do. It's fantastic and just so calming and peaceful. vegetable growing has always been a big part of the garden here and there are several areas as you wander around. This piece that I'm in now is the allotment garden and it looks like allotments, very very well tended and the aim is to make sure there's something in production all year round and some wonderful specimens of trees. We've got the orchard at the back there but look at these cordons here. These must be very old. I would think these are at least 30, 40 years old grown at 45 degrees and spur prune back really adds some structure to the garden but apart from this area there's also the parterre area which is very formal ideal if you've got a small space and there's the ornamental kitchen garden so you can get loads of ideas on how to grow lovely fruit and veg in the garden Well, I'm here now with Nick Hamilton. Nick, it's lovely to be back in the garden. I've not been for a few years and it's looking fantastic. But for those that aren't familiar with Barnsdale, just give us a potted history of how it all became about. My father moved here um, in 1983. Actually, he was already presenting on Garden as well by then. Uh, the place he was presenting from was being sold. He only rented a, a property on that land. This came available it's a little farmhouse really with about five and a half acres of land four acres of which could be turned into garden space so he basically started from pasture 
and presented from here for the 14 years of, of the 17 years he was on the TV for. And obviously since he passed away, it's been open to the public and many people have enjoyed it since. Yeah, and, and obviously you've done lots of changes which we'll touch on, but when your dad was creating it, although it was five acres, he didn't create it as one big stately home garden. He did it as lots of smaller areas, which are very cleverly linked together. But the idea being to give people ideas and inspiration for their gardens on a smaller scale, wasn't it? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about being realistic. It's all about being achievable. And, but people need to feel like they're seeing their own sort of garden spaces within this. So we've sort of got two halves to one garden. So uh, the area we're in at the moment is part of what I call the television garden. So this was the bit that he had. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but of course, in, in 1989, we, we, he also bought another area of land where we were primarily to develop the nursery, but also the garden space around it. And that we've done in the same way so that there's all these different ideas of what to do with your own garden, so small spaces, but you're right, wherever you are in it, it feels like a garden. Yeah, it does. It is very clever because you can walk around the corner and there's another garden there. It's very cleverly done. And I remember coming, oh, 26, 27 years ago to do a radio interview with your dad and we walked down the Versailles garden. I've just been in there earlier and it's looking fantastic. One of the things that your dad is, and you've continued it, you've totally organic aren't you in the garden? We are, we're organic and peat free in the garden, peat free in the nursery but not 100% organic but organic and peat free in the, in the garden and like you say you know it looks fantastic you go onto the productive areas the allotment and the other productive areas that we've got uh, and it and it also tastes fantastic mm. I can assure you of that um, I don't look underfed do I? No you don't look <laughs> underfed you look very well exactly yeah and there's so much wildlife in the garden as well there's birds everywhere singing so that obviously you've got that balance here haven't you? But that's what it's all about. It's about the balance. So we understand that we will suffer a little bit of damage. It is only a little bit. Sometimes you need to turn a blind eye. But in order to have the predator, which is the wildlife that we want, we also need the pest for them to feed off. So it is all about a happy balance. So, you know, <clears throat> I think gardens these days, because of the extra stuff that people are doing, you know, a lot more that people are doing now, you know, we don't expect gardens to be absolutely pristine and clipped within an inch of their life anymore. Mm. So. I don't really think that it matters so much that you have a little bit of stuff that isn't quite right from time to time, but it is only minimal. And if you can live with that, then organics really is got to be your thing. Absolutely, yeah. Now, this is the five acre original television garden, but there's another three acres and there's a nursery. So that is all your, well, you look after everything here, of course. Now it's, it's your baby. But what's the other three acres? Is that gardens as well? That's gardens as well. Very much laid out in this sort of principle. So it's smaller gardens within the garden space, obviously not quite as mature although mature enough well we started in late 1989 so it's been being developed for quite a while um, but it's in a similar layout because it works so well and of course you're open to the public i mean it's great that everybody can come and share this garden so are you open every day when can people come and visit you for our sins i keep saying this and it was my decision but for <laughs> our sins we close christmas eve and christmas day and that's it generally nine to five through the main season slightly shorter hours in the winter because of the light level and things but every single day we're open yeah. and and it's great because we we can spread the numbers of people about so it never feels overly busy in here it always feels relaxed and, and why would you want to be harassed and rushed when you're in such a beautiful space you need the time to enjoy it yeah and it's one of those gardens you can come back time and time again because it's never going to be the same on two visits is it, it changes not just through the seasons it changes almost weekly i would imagine well to be honest martin at this time of year it's a daily thing but you're right every you could come every week of the year and, and see something different maybe every month in the winter but it's certainly every week of the year through spring, summer and the autumn and see something different. And that's the great thing about it. Well, thank you for letting us come to have a wander around. It's great. Uh, I'm going to have another wander around and see some more of it. And if people want more information, you've got a fantastic website, haven't you? We have barnstellgardens.co.uk. You find everything you need on there. Thanks, Nick. And we'll see you again soon. Pleasure. Nice to see you, Martin. Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and I hope you've enjoyed this short tour of Barnsdale Gardens. If you get the chance to come and visit, it's well, well worth it. And do what we're going to do now, have a cup of tea and a piece of cake. Next week, we'll be back in our vegetable plot, catching up with everything that's happening there. So we'll see you then. Bye.